Revelation chapter 11 verse 4 calls the two witnesses, the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. This prophecy indicates that the prophecy about the two witnesses is directly foreshadowed by a prophecy in Zechariah chapters 3 to 4 about two individuals called the two olive trees. Since Revelation chapter 11 links the two witnesses to information in Zechariah chapters 3 to 4's prophecy, a digression into Zechariah's prophecy is necessary to understand more about the two witnesses. The prophecy in Zechariah chapters 3 to 4 gives the names Joshua and Zerubbabel to the two men called the two olive trees in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 11 and it reveals that they are alive at a time the foundation of this house has been laid down. Zechariah and Haggai were two prophets who lived at the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, and Zechariah's prophecy about the two olive trees likens them to two of their actual contemporaries who were named Joshua and Zerubbabel. According to Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 and 12, Zerubbabel was a political officer and Joshua was a high priest at that time. Since the two historic figures called the two olive trees are referenced in Revelation chapter 11 as types of the two witnesses, it could indicate that one of the two witnesses will have a political background, while the other witness will have a priestly background. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 states that Zerubbabel's power will flow from God's Holy Spirit. This is consistent with Revelation chapter 11 verse 3 that God's power will energize the two witnesses at the time of their calling. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7 prophesies that a great mountain will become a plain before Zerubbabel. Mountains are used in prophecies as types of human nations. Zerubbabel will be able to turn a great mountain into a plain. In other words, God's power will be so strong in Zerubbabel that the military power of mighty nations or the beast power of Revelation will be leveled before Zerubbabel. No human military power will be able to stand before the divine power that will flow through the two witnesses. Zerubbabel had been involved in laying the foundation of the house. That refers to the earlier temple in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9, which may indicate that one of the two witnesses will be involved with the effort to build a temple of God in Jerusalem in the latter days, and that these efforts will proceed from a time of very humble beginnings. Zerubbabel uses a plummet, a tool used in construction measurements. This parallels the fact that the two witnesses will emerge at a time the latter-day temple is being measured. Zechariah chapter 3 is a prophecy about Joshua, the other olive tree of this prophecy and a type of the other witness of Revelation chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 mentions that Joshua was serving as the high priest in Ezra's time, and Joshua is personified as being between the angel of the Lord and Satan, who is resisting or opposing him. This, Joshua, is at a nexus of a battle being waged between good and bad angels, but the Lord decides the contest in favor of a good outcome. The Lord rebukes Satan from opposing Joshua any further, and then likens Joshua to a brand plucked from the fire. Joshua is further depicted as being clothed in filthy garments, as he stood before an angel. A brand plucked from the fire pictures a stick or branch that is in the process of being ignited or burned in a fire, but which is plucked or rescued from the fire, so it is not consumed. This, Joshua, does not emerge unscathed from the spiritual contest between good and evil angels which has raged around him. His filthy garments indicate he is in a sinful or personally damaged state when he is plucked from the fire and rescued by God. In Zechariah chapter 3 verses 4 to 5, God removes Joshua's iniquity, and he is figuratively given new, clean garments and a fair mitre. In other words, this individual is cleaned up, or restored, so he can perform the duties assigned to him by God. In Zechariah chapter 3 verses 6 to 8, an angel gives Joshua a charge to walk in God's ways, in order to perform the priestly duties assigned to him. This is not the first time that God has chosen a spiritually damaged or unfit individual to serve him in a prophetic capacity. When Isaiah was called to be a prophet, he protested that he was unworthy because he had unclean lips, and the Apostle Paul had previously been an enemy of God when known by his earlier surname of Saul. Zechariah chapter 4 verses 11 to 14 
described Joshua and Zerubbabel not only as the two olive trees, but also as the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. This strongly parallels the role of the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11, who will serve as two anointed ones, who will wield divine power in a global ministry in the latter days. The separate descriptions of Joshua and Zerubbabel apparently give us clues about some aspects of the lives of the two people who will be called by God to be the two witnesses in the latter days.